we have kind of broken down. It's quite interesting as well with the weather today. It really feels like you're in almost like a rainforest jungle. Okay, quick update. So I think we are gonna be staying in a hotel. It's not booked yet. We're just trying to get them to sort that all out. Hi everyone and welcome to our channel. We are Hannah and Johnny, also known as Finding Our Adventure. In 2020, we converted our Ford Transit to live in full time. Since then, we've been on an endless adventure with our two cats, Tia and Skye, exploring, living and working in our tiny home. Join us each week for a new episode of Finding Our Adventure. Good morning everybody and welcome to another episode of Finding Our Adventure. We have just arrived in the um, coastal town of Riba da Sella, I think that's how it's pronounced, and we've parked up in a free um, motorhome camper van parking area. It actually has facilities and everything so we'll make the most of those later and now we're just walking into town and it's supposed to be abs absolutely spectacular, one of the most beautiful little towns um, along the coast here so we're excited to go explore. So the weather's pretty overcast again today and since we've been in this area it's been, um, it's been quite cloudy like this. And we think it's because of the um, the mountains along the coast here. We think they just trap a lot of the, like the sea air and create clouds and everything, and it cr creates quite a cool, um, moderate climate. It's about 25 degrees every day since we've been here, which has been nice. really nice since we've been having 40 degrees weather um, for the last few weeks and stuff. So it's nice to have a break from that. But um, it creates a really like tropical, green, lush environment, and it's it's just amazing here. Like the the cliffs and the mountains that's covered in trees and bushes. I mean, it, it feels like we're in Southeast Asia. It's just a really cool place to visit. We've just been following the river along a beautiful promenade and there's lots of information, lots of like stories and kind of mythological creatures of the Astorias, which is the region that we're in. So we've been reading a little bit about them and it's absolutely beautiful. The river goes all the way out to the ocean here and we've walked all the way along to the end. And now I think we're just gonna walk up to the church, but it's absolutely stunning. There's a lovely beach on the other side, which is just stretches pretty much all the way along the town. There's people paddle boarding, jet skiing and surfing and the buildings as well are very pretty colours and you've got the backdrop of the mountains all the way around and just this amazing vibrant green. It's just very pretty. <music> made it to the top of the hill and the church up here has spectacular views across the bay it's got all the mountains in the background the town and I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head back down to town to get some ice cream because the Sun's come out and it's getting really warm good morning everybody we have arrived in the town of Kudlero and it's a beautiful wait for the car to go past <laughs> it's a beautiful seaside town where the houses are all built up into the the rocks up here but unfortunately, it's actually our first wet day of the trip. It's spitting at the moment, it's a little bit damp. And we actually arrived last night and it was looking really beautiful and we didn't film anything. So um, yeah, a little bit disappointed this morning, but we're still gonna go explore. Yeah, it's very atmospheric. <laughs> we're trying to work our way to the top to get a nice view and the streets here are very steep and uh, there's lots of different stairs and options to take, so fingers crossed we're going the right way. There's 
such a crisscross and mix, mismatch of footpaths, steps, stairs, everything around here. It's just a bit of a maze to get to the top. It's really cool. It's like a, it's like a puzzle to try to figure out. And um, we've got really good views of the of the town right now from above, and we're just trying to work our way right to the top to see what it's like from up there. We've made it to the top, and I'm still out of breath. And I don't know whether it's sweat or rain on my face because it, <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference right now. But we're right at the top and there's amazing views from the top up here. It's quite interesting as well with the weather today. It really feels like you're in almost like a rainforest, jungle kind of um, environment because the trees are kind of popping up on top of the hills and then there's like this mist all around them. It's just absolutely stunning. And then the colourful buildings just popping out through the clouds as well. So. Yeah, it's been really, really fun to just explore the streets this morning and see all the little quirks and um, different things that they've, how they've decorated their houses. So we we'll definitely recommend visiting here. And I think we'll head back to the van in a bit just to shelter from the uh, mist. And also we're going to head a bit further south today, I think. So we've got a bit of driving to do. We're driving through the mountains now and the fog is so thick we can only probably see about 25 meters or so ahead of us so we're driving very slowly but it's um yeah it's very very hard to see because the the, flo the the fog the fog is actually very bright as well so you're kind of squinting to try and make out the road um Hopefully down it's down. gonna be a bit better now because we kind of went up into the mountains and we're coming back down now. So through it. oh, literally as I <laughs> picked up the camera, it's much better now. But I was filming earlier, so you'll see some clips of how bad it was. We just had a quick break and we've got a bit of driving to do today. And on the road, we just spotted these huge nests on top of some like pylons and we reckon they might have been storks which is really cool and we've been since we've been here in northern spain i think we've been completely surprised i mean i didn't know really know what to expect but the amount of variety of wildlife here that i just didn't think lived here in northern spain has just been really amazing we've definitely taken the scenic route today we've been going through all sorts of mountain passes and windy roads and it's meant that we've been able to go through some really beautiful places um, and Johnny's done a great job at driving so keep it up <laughs> they have so many viaducts here in Spain to cross over the mountains and we just stopped off at an air again just to fill up our water and empty our toilet which is brilliant and one of the things we've noticed here in Spain is that a lot of the airs are actually free which is really really good and there are a lot of them as well in most of the towns um, it's quite easy to find and they're very accessible and have bins as well so a massive thumbs up for Spain so journey update we have kind of broken down really frustrating um, basically the motorway is kind of closed down there and we're coming up this this other road and there's lots of lorries coming up in they're going so slow and I think the issues we've been experiencing over the last couple of weeks are to do with the turbo and um, the turbo just started whining really, really loud. And so we've managed to find this pull off here, which is actually quite safe because we're on a, this mountain road that there's no other pull offs. And so we are able to stop and then we've let the van cool down. We've turned it on again and we try to drive and the turbo is still really whining. So we've called our breakdown cover and they're going to um, get us sorted out and get us towed into the next town to try to get it fixed. Probably get, have to get a new turbo fitted, but it's just, yeah, mega frustrating of the, we thought the van was fixed and everything, but, um, don't know maybe maybe that fault code was something to do with the turbo and he just turned it off and it's put more strain on the turbo but yeah it's one of those things so we've broken down in europe our first breakdown in europe and um hopefully over the next couple of days we'll be able to get that fixed and then be back on the road again but at least it's not too bad of a spot to break down we're pretty safe here and um yeah we'll just wait for the recovery truck if they come and come and get us in a little while so we've got an update on the breakdown we've um we actually first called our recovery company at 6 p.m um Spanish time and it's now 9 p.m. Spanish time and they they've been pretty good to be fair to them they've been very helpful and they've been trying to basically get hold of their European um, recovery team 
who they said have been quite tricky to get hold of this afternoon, but they finally got through to them. So the case is with them. So the European team is going to take over and hopefully get us recovered. But in all likelihood now, we're going to probably be recovered tomorrow morning and taken to a garage, which is about half an hour, half an hour away in the big, next biggest town. So luckily we didn't break down too far away from anywhere. And um, hopefully that means that they'll be able to assess the van, get new parts, whatever it needs to be, and then we'll be back on the road within a couple of days, fingers crossed. Um, but obviously we, we don't really know what's wrong with the van yet. We're pretty sure it's a turbo, so it could be a, a fairly big job depending on how long it takes them to get the part. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're in a pretty beautiful place to break down. Luckily we're on the side of the road where it's fairly safe. And uh, yeah, we've got a van with us. I've just had a shower because I, um, I hadn't had a shower for a few days. So we've been able to do a few things and just chill. Um, we're gonna put Netflix on now and just see what happens. So, you know, worst things could happen, right? What a long day. We've had a very slow morning and then a very slow rest of the day. And I think, in a way, looking back, even though I, I would normally get really stressed about this sort of thing, it's actually made me realise that we probably did need to slow down. And this has kind of been our moment where it's, the van has said, look guys, take it easy. You're going too fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, a bit of a pain today. Um, yeah, I'm very tired. <laughs> I've just done the washing up and it doesn't look like we're being picked up today because apparently there's a lot of other people being towed and because it's tourist season and all that, everybody else is having issues. So it could be a while till we get it fixed as well. So we don't really know what's gonna go on, but we're very lucky in the place that we are currently um, parked up, had a lovely sunset couldn't really ask for more really I mean can't really complain and obviously I've got Johnny and the cats so <laughs> yeah so we just had a call from the um the European breakdown team now which is good they said they, they're really apologetic they just said it's been a manic day and it's been a while for them to get through to us uh, th um, onto our case but they said that um most likely it's gonna be tomorrow morning now like we thought and they said um, if they need to organise a cat friendly hotel for us while the van gets fixed and they can do that. We said we'd prefer to just be in the van though because of all our stuff and everything but we'll see what happens at the garage tomorrow mm -hmm. and hopefully they can get us into a garage tomorrow, hopefully get it fixed reasonably quickly. We're not in a massive tourist area so it shouldn't be too busy we hope but um, yeah, yeah I mean hopefully not. there's a beautiful sunset going on right now. We've just had a lovely dinner that Hannah made us yeah. and I think we're just Luckily gonna... we weren't on the hard shoulder because yeah. I would be very stressed. Luckily, when I when, I, when the turbo started really whining and going, I could see there was a pull-in mm. just about 100 metres ahead of us, and we managed to get there. It's a beautiful, quiet little road. Um, yeah, we had cows pass us earlier, yeah. and the cats were watching them getting herded by the sheep. Yep. Well, the, they don't call sheep dog, I was going to say but cow yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really lucky that we broke down here and not on the, the busy road up the hill, because we would have just been in an absolute nightmare situation. A right pickle. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we've got to jump into bed now and just uh, watch a movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> if I can stay awake. <laughs> oh, girls! You can't go out here, there's cows roaming around. Watch that then. She looks yeah. like she's gonna. Oh, okay. Here you go. Say hi to everybody. Hello! Hello, everybody. I really want to go on a walk. Whoa, getting confident are we? Good morning everybody. We have woken to another very misty morning here in the mountains and luckily I was up nice and early this morning on my phone doing a little bit of work because we had a phone call from the recovery truck guy very early. He's on his way, um, very broken English but that was good because I don't speak any Spanish so that was helpful but we were thinking he was saying 50 minutes till he gets here and then they sent us a map of a live update and it was actually 15 minutes so we've quickly got ready and now we're waiting for him to come and recover the van. Hopefully the truck he brings is big enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, we took out specific camper van and motorhome breakdown covers, so hopefully they've sorted all that logistics out. But as you as you know, things can get lost in translation sometimes. So fingers crossed we get towed into a town today, it gets assessed and we can get on the road again soon. So this is the map we've been sent. As, as you can see, he is now eight minutes away and he's coming to get us. So fingers crossed, everything goes well.
So the guy has come to rescue us this morning and he speaks very, very little English. So we are getting by with Google Translate and they've just taken the van off this morning because the turbo doesn't sound that screechy as it was yesterday. Yesterday it literally sounded like it was going to explode. So they've taken it for a little spin, I think, just to see whether the issue is still there. But it doesn't fill us with much confidence that it just, it seems to be every time we've gone to a garage, it doesn't seem to be showing the mechanics the issue. So who knows, we'll see, see what the result is from the test drive. Okay, so um, me and the uh, recovery driver, I think he's a mechanic as well, we went for a, um, a test drive and for a good while, and I'm guessing it's because the engine was cold, um, we went driving uphill and there was no sound from the turbo and stuff, it seemed like it was okay. I mean, I could tell that it was slightly off, like it's very a different noise from what it normally is. But eventually, once we got above, above the clouds where it was really beautiful up there, it started making a really whining noise and he straight away goes, ah, oh, yeah, turbo. So um, he could hear it. So we've been on the phone to our um, breakdown company and now they're speaking to their Spanish correspondents who are organising a mechanic in the area somewhere and they said it could take one to two hours. So the driver's gone off and they'll call him to come and get us once they've organised something. But they keep saying that because it's holidays, people are on holiday, it's very busy, it might take a while. So fingers crossed it doesn't take too long. Um, so we just have to sit here, wait, and I think we're just going to get on with some computer work. And then um, hopefully soon we get it sorted. So he'll be back in a few hours and then probably be towing us somewhere. I feel like these shots are going to get really boring with me walking up this road and the van in the background. But it's time for a 6pm update. We obviously haven't moved from this spot all day and um, we've basically it's pretty much on a dot 24 hours since we broke down and um, what's happening is the Spanish um, breakdown team have been on calling garages all day uh, to try to get us an appointment somewhere but because everything's so booked and it's the holiday time and it's apparently the most common time to break down and um, they haven't been able to get anything yet so they've expanded their search area to like 100 kilometers to hope hopefully book us into a garage somewhere but it's Thursday today and it's Friday tomorrow. We're running out of food and water and um, the garages are all closed on Saturday and Sunday. So they've really only got tomorrow to, the rest of today and tomorrow to try to find somewhere. And um, they said if they haven't found any, but anywhere by the end of the day, then tomorrow they'll basically have a plan of action in place where we can talk to them and possibly get moved somewhere else where we're gonna be closer to shops or, or whatever it might be. And um, it almost it might it might also mean that when we get the gar um, the van finally booked into a garage that we need to go into a hotel somewhere. Um, this is all covered under the breakdown cover that would be put in a hotel, but it's just an added complication of having Tia and Sky with us. Um, obviously, it's not like two, picking up two kids where we can just have them in push chairs or anything because they'll get stressed out. And also, we need to find a cat-friendly hotel as well. So, yeah, it's just um, lots of logistics and language barriers to overcome with trying to get this fixed. But you know, it seems like the um, the breakdown cover team are on it they're passing lots of messages around and they're they're trying their best to figure something out so we'll update you when we've got some more news so i just um i walked up to the ladies that were sitting up by the i think it must be the hotel or outside their house and um as i said before i was we were just being a bit worried that they think that we're just like camping here which we're not at all because obviously we've broken down so i used um trusty google translate and walked up to them and i said to them on google translate we are sorry that we've parked on your road, but we've broken down and we're waiting for the garage to come and repair our van. And straight away they were like, oh, no problemo, no problemo. And they're really sweet about it. So hopefully, obviously, if anyone is, if anyone does say anything, which they probably won't, then they'll be able to say that we've, we've broken down that we're waiting for. So yeah, really nice people. And they're just very gracious about it. So, you know, because it is a, obviously we stand out like a sore thumb on there. It's like five, six houses here and we are a big white van and we look very out of place. I've made a decision to, um, walk the two kilometers along the road um, up into the the next town purely because it's very hot this afternoon and we've only got uh, one liter of water left drinking water left um, and you know they might not move us tomorrow so and, and obviously we've got all of the rest of the day and and this evening left so I think it's a smart thing to do is to walk into the town before the shops close and go get some supplies um, I spoke to the ladies that I spoke to about parking on the side and she said it's safe to walk in so could do it. I was tempted to take the one wheel but um, after the um, the hill incident last time I took the one wheel out Hannah wouldn't let me so um, right, so, so I'm on my own it's on the road anything could happen so it's better to best to be safe and not have any accidents yeah just go walk up this hill walk into town quick get some supplies and then we'll head back to the van. I've just made it to Pedrafita El Castro, I think is what the town's called. 
and you can hear all the trucks rumbling past me now and that's because the roundabout just where it comes into town is where the motorway joins uh, the road that we've broken down on and yesterday our road was really busy because there was an issue with the motorway so um, that's partly the reason why the turbo went so quick is because we're stuck behind heavy lorries going very slowly up a very steep hill uh, so I think it just exaggerated what was already going to be a big issue um, but yeah much quieter today luckily that road to walk up and now I'm going to walk in and try to find a shop to get some supplies and um, make it down safely and also the weather today even at over a thousand meters now has um, gone above 32 degrees and over the weekend it's supposed to get up to 36 degrees so we've got no shade down where we are so hopefully the recovery team can move us somewhere better for that sort of weather all right that was a successful mission got everything we needed from the shop and it actually has plenty there so if we need to come back and get more then they've got all the supplies that we need food and everything if we are stuck here for longer than tomorrow and just walking back down the hill now which will be much easier than walking up back down to the van because i've got about 10 liters on my back i'm glad it's all downhill from here and uh yeah can't wait to uh get all these bottles of water in the fridge and have a nice cold drink and just uh, probably chill out for the rest of the evening now and uh see what happens tomorrow morning so we'll probably um probably won't record anything for the rest of today now we'll probably just give you an update tomorrow hi <laughs> are you our guardian angel you're lovely Good morning everybody. Um, we've been um, greeted this morning by our local friendly neighbourhood dog. He's been really nice. I think he's actually peed up our wheel this morning so uh, yeah not so good points there. But um, quick update on the van. Um, we phoned them this morning because they said yesterday they would phone us this morning updating us on what the plan of action is which they didn't so we phoned them. It's now 10.30 and uh, the guy was like oh oh I can't believe you've been on the side of the road for that long and I'm um, not really sure what's happening and he spent ages reading the file and so I um, I stopped being so polite and put my firm voice on and then within 10 minutes apparently they found a garage they're sending a tow truck and we're going to be towed and sent to a garage today so uh, that's good news I guess um, we haven't actually had the phone call back yet confirming everything because apparently only one of us can go in a tow truck and Hannah has to go in a taxi so that, that's not been sorted out yet so we don't actually know when this is going to happen um, and the other thing is it's the weekend tomorrow so we imagine if it gets into the garage today whatever time that is they might be able to look at it hopefully and then order parts but it won't be sorted till next week because at the very earliest it'll probably be Monday that they start working on it so yeah we don't know exactly time scales or anything like that but good news that they found a garage because that will seem that will seem to be the biggest hurdle of the whole thing so far. So we've made it to the Ford dealership. The um, the guy who towed us spoke no English, so we were getting by on Google Translate, and he has now left us, and we have no idea what is going on. Johnny's just gone to go and figure out what's happening. Um, I'm just checking in on the girls, put the fountain on. They seem to have had a good journey. This guy's on the bed, very sleepy. Tears down here. So they seem to be okay and not too um, shaken up by being towed on the back of that van. So um, yeah, it's about 40 minute drive from where we were and we are now in the city of Lugo, which is uh, northwest of where we were. So we're kind of going in the opposite direction of where we were heading, but um, it seems like there's a lot around here. We need to just figure out what we're doing this weekend, whether we're actually but what, where we're staying so I think a lot of the garages are closed at the weekend and today is Friday and I very much doubt that 
the van is going to be fixed today so yeah we've just got to think ahead the next couple of days and see what's going on okay quick update so i think we are going to be staying in a hotel it's not booked yet we're just trying to get them to sort that all out so now we've got to pack <laughs> uh, for goodness knows i don't know how long they're saying hopefully next week it will be fixed and they're hoping to look at it today so yeah packing for maybe a few days don't know so now just gotta pack okay goodbye van we're now off in a taxi how you doing we're we're getting there so the van has been um it's at the dealership now they are um gonna diagnose it today hopefully get it fixed early next week obviously because they don't work on the weekend really nice guys um but because it's a ford dealership i imagine it's gonna cost a lot more than if it was just a, a local garage but from what we've been told it's the only ones who had availability to get it in and um and then we've, we've just been waiting around a while to get a hotel sorted because um we have to let the insurance guys do it and then we just weren't hearing anything back it's the, the story the whole time has been that the uk and the european team have been very good and very responsive but it seems like the spanish team have been quite slow at doing things they just they're not picking up emails they're not picking up calls really so it's very very hard to get anything um but we just spoke to the European team and they, they gave us approval to book the hotel ourselves and to book the taxi ourselves and they've given us a claim form to claim it all back. So Hannah's just found a hotel that accepts um, cats in the centre of this town. So we're going to head there now, check in and we've booked in for three nights so far and then hopefully Monday will be fixed but they said that if we need to go more than three nights then we'll phone them back and they can approve extra night stays. So yeah, it's, it's getting there and hopefully it gets fixed soon and um, we'll get back on the road. Yeah, hopefully it means that we can settle for a little bit for the next few nights, so looking forward to just chilling and maybe exploring a bit of the town. Okay, we have just arrived at the hotel, checked in, and um, Tia and Sky are out having a little explore, and uh, they're going to have the time of their lives here, we think. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to get settled, and then we'll pick this up in again in a minute. Okay, we've got the girls all settled and I think I'll just give you a quick tour of the room um, and I have actually haven't really looked around the room much myself, so I'll show you now. So as we walk in, we've got some luggage storage areas here. We've got, I think, is there a fridge in here? Yep. We've got a fridge in there, which is really good because we'll need that and kettle and stuff so we can eat some food. We've got the main bed area. They didn't have a, um, a pet friendly room left with a double bed, so they pushed the beds together, but it's fine. We've got Tia chilling out on the bed there. We've got Sky right there as well. Both having a good explore. We've set up their beds down here, obviously their litter tray. We always travel with a travel litter tray, by the way, just in case anything like this happens. And we've got their food set up here. So they're all nice and happy. I think they could probably have a snooze soon because they'll be tired. And then we've got a sink area here and a big shower room here, which is going to be amazing because obviously living in a van, we don't have a big shower. And then in this room, we've got a nice big toilet as well. So that is our room for the next three nights. Oh yeah, we've got a nice big window here as well. And um, we're not sure if either it looks like an old prison out there or a school, but um, Hannah thinks it's a school. Yeah. Got a massive TV as well. Oh yeah, we nice big those. TV. <laughs> and these two are gonna be right monkeys, I reckon. They're gonna really enjoy their time here. Yeah, I'm ready for bed. I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, I finally feel like I can just go. <sighs> we've been having a super chill, um, evening afternoon in the um hotel and we've got one sleeping on the bed another one sleeping in the bed <laughs> not really i <laughs> just, just fake it but, i'm just uh, acting for the camera <laughs> <laughs> but we've got finally sky is asleep she was a bit anxious earlier but she's finally uh, passed out on the bed and then we've also got tia down here in her bed having a lovely little chill session so that is the end of this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope the van gets fixed early next week. We're gonna take time off over the weekend now, just go explore the town and see what's around here. And don't get, forget to give us a like and a comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've watched. And we'll see you guys next week to figure everything out.